girl who was shot by the Taliban. And some, the girl who fought for her rights. Some people call me a Nobel laureate now. However, my brother still called me that annoying bossy sister. As far as I know, I'm just a committed an even stubborn person who wants to see every child getting quality education, who wants to see women having equal rights, and who wants peace in every corner of the world. place of terrorism. I was just 10 that more than 400 schools were destroyed. Women were flogged. People were killed. And our beautiful dreams turned into nightmares. Education went from being a right to being a crime. Girls were stopped from going to school. When my world suddenly changed, my priorities changed too. I had two options. One was to remain silent and wait to be killed. And the second was to speak up and then be killed. I chose the second one. I decided to speak up. We could not just stand by and see those injustices of the terrorists denying our rights, ruthlessly killing people, and misusing the name of Islam, we decided to raise our voice and tell them, have you not learned, have you not learned that in the Holy Quran, Allah says, if you kill one person, it is as if you kill the whole humanity. Do you not know that Muhammad Peace be upon him, the prophet of mercy. He says, do not harm yourself or others. And do you not know that the very first word of the Holy Quran 
is the word iqra, which means read. The terrorist tried to stop us and attacked me and my friends who are here today on our school bus in 2012. But neither their ideas nor their bullets could win. We survived. And since that day, our voices have grown louder and louder. my story, not because it is unique, but because it is not. It is the story of many girls. Today, I tell their stories too. I have brought with me some of my sisters from Pakistan, from Nigeria, and from Syria, who share this story. My brave sisters. Shazia and Kainat, who were also shot that day on our school bus. But they have not stopped learning. And my brave sister, Kainat Somro, who went through severe abuse and extreme violence. Even her brother was killed, but she did not succumb. Also, my sisters here, whom I have met during my Malala Fund campaign. My 16-year-old courageous sister, Mozoon, from Syria, who now lives in Jordan as a refugee. And she goes from tent to tent, encouraging girls and boys to learn. And my sister, Amina, from the north of Nigeria, where Boko Haram threatens and stops girls and even kidnaps girls just for wanting to go to school. Though I appear as one girl, though I appear as one girl, one person who is five foot, two inches tall, if you include my high heels, it means I'm five foot only. I am not a lone voice. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. I am Malala, but I'm also Shazia. I'm Kainat. I'm Kainat Somro. I am Mozun. I am Amina. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. And today, I'm not raising my voice. It is the voice of those 66 million girls.
This is where I will begin, but it is not where I will stop. I will continue this fight until I see every child, every child in school. Dear brothers and sisters, great people who brought change, like Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa and Aung San Suu Kyi once stood here on this stage. I hope the steps that Kailash Satyarthi and I have taken so far and will take on this journey will also bring change, lasting change. Let's begin this ending now. <laughs>